Uh, thanks very much, Katrina, for inviting me along today. Uh, and thanks everyone for joining. So today I'm going to be uh, speaking uh, to you all about our school's experience of incorporating digital assessments as part of our, our capstone project. Some of you might already be familiar with this if you're if you're in the school, but hopefully some of these ideas are, are relevant more broadly to the um, discussion today. So a few years ago, our school introduced or decided to, to really develop a couple of alternatives for the capstone familiar with to some uh, extent. So we brought in a creative writing uh, capstone project and we also brought in an open collections capstone project one I want to um, talk to you about today. So the latter was really designed as an alternative to the traditional dissertation of 10 to 12,000 words, and it encourages engagement with the library's collections in early printed books and in manuscripts and archives. At the start of the project, I suppose interested staff were asked to identify appropriate materials from those collections in the library uh, that students might be interested in, in researching. The current list covers everything really for a range of things from medieval and Renaissance texts to the works of Mariah Edgeworth and, and Bram Stoker uh, to projects that engage with the Pollard's collection of, of children's books. Um, a whole separate module, I suppose, in SITS and in Blackboard had to be set up for this model of the, the capstone, uh, uh, and it had a distinctive assessment pattern and learning outcomes. So the assessment pattern, uh, which was, and this was all discussed by the school and agreed kind of collectively uh, by, uh, by all of us, uh, would, would include a kind of a reflective journal, which was 20% of the mark, an analytical essay that was worth 40%, and then a, what was called a public facing element, uh, which would usually be a blog, but it can be something else. You could use this for like an online exhibition or a podcast or, or something like that, but it's usually um, a blog and that was worth 40%. These different elements uh, assess various different learning outcomes, including that students should be able to conduct original archival research, create public facing digital outputs, engage in critical thinking and communicate academic insights to the uh, general public. Just to give uh, you all a sense of, of what was involved and all of the the kind of, I suppose, technologies that the school decided to use uh, and the teaching uh, supports that we had to put in place to kind of support all of this. Um, a, a range of digital technologies were are used, were used and are used to support the assessments. The analytical essay is, you know, as a number of you have already kind of mentioned in your comments there, it's just a, a st this is just the standard type of, of online submission of essays via Blackboard that, that I'm sure we're all familiar with at this stage after, after COVID. The reflective journal is maybe a more interesting uh, kind of a element here because that was originally conceived as a, a, a physical uh, handwritten journal where we were going to ask students to, um, to, to kind of present uh, their submit their their handwritten notes uh, reflecting on their experience working with the project and their experience developing the blog or whatever um, whatever it it was it's a good idea because I think it makes the students think about the kind of process of knowledge production and also to think about the medium in which the findings of reach research could be presented and a couple of years ago I, I, I supervised a student doing this project and and she incorporated a kind of a scanned image of one of her journal um, journal entries into her blog as a way of kind of comparing and contrasting the uh, the kind of organizational features of a medieval manuscript which is what she was looking at with her own kind of journal as a kind of 21st century manuscript in in a way the public facing element is usually a blog like i say though you can do uh, you can do other things um, particularly if if a, a if you're involved in, in some other kind of digital research project that you might be able to connect with. But when we use the, the blog, the, the format we use is just WordPress, which works quite well for us because it, uh, it's quite easily available. It, it allows us to kind of password protect, the students password protect the work so that they can be developing it in the background and then they don't have to make anything public until they've got their marks and everything is uh, has been checked for say copyright compliance 
compliance and 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 all of that. So that worked uh, quite well um, for us. Now the different skills involved in something like this uh, require different kind of teaching support. So so things like developing guidelines and and feedback on the the essay, um, marking criteria, all of that stuff. Um, providing students with links to YouTube tutorials. Um, we we um, all colleagues were asked to kind of submit sample blogs that they thought were kind of good examples for students of of, of a kind of digital uh, projects for the public facing element, and also things like group training sessions that were uh, kind of introduced to support all of this. So actually, quite a lot of of, of work has to go into that kind of side of supporting things. I think now obviously. A model like this has a lot of challenges. So some of the challenges were things like ensuring that appropriate guidance and developing the grading schemes and all of those other, other things. Another issue was just defining what you mean by public facing elements. So uh, students were encouraged to kind of think about their audience and kind of include that in their, their journals. And, and then that was taken into consideration when, when marking the, the blogs and the public facing elements. And also copyright issues had to be addressed by liaising with the library, uh, encouraging the use of, of already digitized material, uh, providing guidance on requests for permissions, et cetera, and the password protection, like I mentioned. But there's also lots of other uh, opportunities, including supporting students to engage with archival research, developing transferable skills in archives, digital public engagement and all of that, and connecting the school's uh, goals with the goals of the library and, uh, and college. All in all, I think a lot of opportunities as well as, as challenges, and I know that a lot of students and staff have benefited a lot from being involved.